Hey guys, G Trevino here. Um, as some of you may know, uh, I play guitar in a pop punk band called The Real King. And so I decided that now would be a great time to show you my live rig and show you exactly what I use for all of our live shows. So without further ado, I'm going to show you the guitar that I use. Okay, so here's my main guitar, my main and only guitar. It is a Schecter Hellraiser C1 in gloss white. Uh, and if you guys are familiar with the guitar, you could probably obviously see that I made some of my own modifications to it. Uh, I guess the most obvious thing is that I switched all of the chrome hardware to gold hardware. So I switched it out for a gold hip shot bridge, uh, gold knobs, gold uh, Grover locking tuners, and most importantly, I switched out those EMGs for uh, these wonderful Fishman Fluence classic humbuckers that are probably my favorite pickup that I've ever played as of yet. I've yet to try uh, the rest of the catalog of the Fishman pickups. Also got my trusty Jimmy clip. Never leave the house without it. And yeah, and this guy usually stays in drop D tuning. Uh, we don't really fiddle around with too many tunings at the moment. And I carry this guy in my Progo Gator gig bag, which is super great. It's got tons of pockets where I put all of my cables and batteries and my in-ear wireless, my guitar wireless, my guitar strap. It's pretty awesome. Okay, and as far as my live rig goes, I guess I'll start from where my guitar signal starts. Uh, everything starts with the Line 6 Relay G70. This is actually the newest piece of gear that I've gotten. Um, it's a super cool wireless. The one thing that I absolutely love about this pedal is that it has that auxiliary in. So if for whatever reason my wireless dies, I don't have to rip it off the pedal board. I can just plug the cable straight in and I can continue playing the show. No problem. Um, then after that, it goes into the Digitech Drop. We don't use this too much in our live settings as of yet, but with the new album that we're currently writing, uh, a lot of the stuff is in Drop C tuning versus our regular Drop D tuning. So this will make it super easy to switch between all the different tunings. And then after that, that goes into my trusty TU3 Boss Chromatic Tuner. Um, some of you might wonder why I use a Boss tuner versus the regular Line 6 tuner that comes stock with my Pod HD. For one, the Pod HD tuner is okay. It's not the fastest. And the Relay G70 actually has its own tuner too, uh, which is pretty great. But um, I'm just so used to the Boss tuner. Uh, I never really leave the house without it. And it also has a built-in buffer, which helps with this long snake that I'll talk about in a second. And then to control all of my patch changes and everything, as you can see, I use the Line 6 uh, FBV Shortboard Mark II. Um, and then next to it is the uh, Line 6 Expression Pedal that you can buy separately. If you have eagle eyes, you can see that it is not connected to the pedal right now. Uh, that's because with the latest uh, firmware update, um, this pedal doesn't work too great with the Pod HD stuff. So Line 6, if you're listening and just happen to be watching my video, for us uh, Pot HD users, um, yeah, this is actually no good with all of the new HD model packs. So, yeah, um, fix it, please. And then all of that runs into this snake that I made. Uh, this snake consists of a 25 foot guitar cable, a 25 foot IEC cable, and a 25 foot Cat6 cable. Um, and it's all going through this really cool Flexo pet braided sleeve that I found on Amazon. Yeah, this is actually meant to be put on existing cables, kind of like your phone charging cables and other power cables they have lying around. So if you have pets that like to chew on your cables, this will actually prevent them from being destroyed. So that's pretty cool. And as you can see, there's the rest of the loom. And then that eventually goes into my rig. And also, I think I forgot to mention, but that Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 2 Plus powers everything. Um, yeah, I, I think that's pretty obvious, but in case anyone was wondering, that's why that's there. So I guess we'll start from top to bottom. Everything lives inside this Gator Rack case, which I've had for a few years now. It's pretty great. Um, everything starts with a Furman power conditioner because protect your investments. Then after that, you'll see that there is a Galaxy Audio AS1100 
which is what I use for my in-ear monitors. And then the brains of the operation, this is my Line 6 Pod HD Pro X that I've had for a very long time. Some of you might be wondering why I use this versus my Line 6 Helix that I use in like all of my videos. And the simplest answer to that is, well, I love my Helix to death and I only have one at the moment. So if I take it out on the road and my bandmates drop this case or I don't take good care of it or something and I'm out a Helix and so I would be vastly devastated if anything happened to it. It would destroy my workflow considerably. So as of right now, until I'm able to afford a second Helix, uh, I'm using my Pod HD Pro X, which still works pretty great. And then powering that is a Crown XLS 1002 power amp. Uh, it's a pretty basic, very clean sounding power amp. Uh, not the best for optimal guitar tone in my opinion, uh, but if you need something that's not super expensive and you just need to drive your cab so you can hear something on stage. Uh, this little guy works great. Um, and then after that, that gets fed into my Mesa uh, 212 rectifier cabinet, which actually I just got two. Okay, so I flipped the rig around to kind of show you what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, if this gets a little complicated, I apologize in advance. Um, just keep rewatching this part of the video and it should make a whole lot of sense. So it all kind of starts with this top uh, eight punch out, like Neutrik D connector thing. Um, this starts with uh, my power. I cut the original end off the power conditioner and switched it out for a power con. So this thing is super snug. That's not going to come out uh, and it won't kill my sound. Uh, this DI out one, this is where uh, I have a direct signal coming out from my pod HD. More on that in a second. Uh, mixer in, that is an in coming from my drummer's mixer um, so I can hear the click in my guitar and everything else. Uh, more on that in a little bit. This amp out is exactly what it sounds like. It is the out coming from the crown and that gets fed into the cabinet. And next to that is the FBV controller input for my Pod HD. This is coming from that same loom that I showed you a second ago. And then next to that is just a USB port so I can update and edit all of my patches. Uh, the reason I have it rack mounted like this is because if something is happening, you know, backstage or the sound guy fumbles around, if this takes a beating, then only this connector or the cable, you know, will get destroyed and nothing inside the actual pot HD will get destroyed. So that's kind of my little insurance that I carry around with me. Okay, so this part might get a little complicated to uh, explain, but I will do my best. Uh, so as you can see, I am using two separate outputs uh, for two different reasons. Uh, so over here at the balance output, I am going line level out into the power amp so I can get the most volume going into the power amp. And then on the other side, I am using the unbalanced output and that gets fed into my mower radar. More on that in a second. Uh, and then I'm just using amp level signal for that so I don't clip the uh, mower radar. And I'm using the mower radar for speaker cab simulation for my in-ear so I can hear myself. Uh, this thing is super cool. If you haven't heard of it, I did a review on it. Uh, with this guy, you can load in your own IRs and it's got a built-in parametric EQ and there's loads of things you can do with it. So check out that video if you haven't already. Next to that is an EB Tech Hum Eliminator. Uh, because the mower does output unbalanced, it is susceptible to noise and ground loops and other things like that. So I use that to eliminate any problems. And then from there, that goes straight to the DA out, which I feed into my drummer's mixer. So before I get into showing you how my patch changes work and how I label everything, um, I have to go into how we play live and how that ties into my in-ear monitoring system. So me and my drummer, Derek, uh, we both play to a click for a number of reasons. Uh, number one being uh, just playing to a click live just makes your live show just so much tighter and so much better. Um, so there's that benefit of it. So the second benefit of that is that we're able to use backing tracks for our live shows now so we can make it that much more exciting. So the way that we go about that is we make a stereo file for each of our songs uh, and then we pan the click hard left and then we pan all of our backing tracks hard right. So that includes some guest vocalists or someone that can't perform with us. 
uh, bass drops and other weird sound effects that we like to use. Um, and so we feed that left and right. Uh, the left channel goes straight into a Behringer 1202 that my drummer controls. And then the right channel goes into a DI box that we feed to the sound guy. Into that same mixer, we feed various other instruments, including a trash mic for our drums, uh, a line out from our bass guitar, uh, another line coming from our other guitarist, and then my guitar. And then using the aux out, that's what I feed into my in-ear and then I can control my own mix. So it's separate from Derek's and I don't have to keep bugging him so we don't have to share the same mix. This is kind of our poor man's version of our in-ear mixing. Um, and the other two guys really don't care about being on the click so it works out for both of us. And as far as my patch changes go and tones, um, I keep it pretty simple. I just have four main tones, a clean, a crunch, my main rhythm, which I'm on like 90% of the time, and a lead tone. And I basically make the patches on a per song basis. So for example, if I switch down to our song, Save Rock and Roll, um, all of the tones are the same as in any other preset, um, but what the only thing that changes is the delay time. So because we are playing to the click, all of the delay times are set to the tempo of the song that I'm playing which makes it really easy. I don't really have to mess with the tap tempo stuff unless I really have to. And all of these pedals sit on top of a Pedal Train Novo 24 pedal board, um, which is super cool. I got it with the Touring hard shell case versus the Gig Bag version, um, which to any of you, I would totally, totally recommend over the Gig Bag because with the Gig Bag, you're just gonna, you know, knobs are going to come loose and you know it, you're just going to have a bad time so it i think it really is worth the extra hundred dollars or whatever it is to to get the touring case so yeah do that and there you go there is my live guitar rig uh, the reason it is labeled part one or part a or whatever i decided to label it is that uh very soon sooner rather than later i'm hoping um, this entire rig is going to change and it's going to switch over to a Line 6 Helix deal. Um, so stay tuned for that. If you don't want to miss that, then be sure to hit subscribe uh, and then click the bell because I have to say that, otherwise you're going to miss my videos. Um, so you don't miss it. For more guitar videos like this, check out my channel, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time.